Hi. I was just finishing my shit up. I, I was told to join you on stage. Okay, hang on. All right, he made it, so I guess I don't get to troll him. Please troll me. Okay, I was going to troll you really bad. Do it. Okay. You want to hear what I was going to do? What? I was going to get a, like somebody that had like a burner Reddit that couldn't be traced to me. Yeah. And I took a photo of your booth, and I was going to say, not only could Locale flake on fucking... Retro Palooza, Boogie ain't even at his own fucking table today, and it was already like 11, yeah. but I, I didn't get to post it. In about a week, you and I are going to have a conversation. About? Why I'm late today. Oh, no, I, I, you're good. It's going to be so funny. Yeah? It's going to be so funny. I like the hair, man. I do, do not. Do not cut it. Do not. No, no. You're in the phase. Yes, this hair on, will. Listen. You're in the phase where it sucks, no, but No, this hair will good. be gone by Wednesday. No, it's not. No, I promise you. You know what will help you? A leave-in conditioner. After you sh- do not use a conditioner that you wash. Do you know what will help even more? Not if you Trip cut to it. Supercuts. No. Which is what I'm doing Tuesday no. night. No. It looks good. Who thinks the hair is good? It's good. I think if you got a leave-in conditioner and you just combed it more often, uh-huh. it would. once you get past the weird phase. I'm going to be balder than Keemstar by Wednesday. No. Right. Grow it to right here. Trust me. Balder than Keemstar by Wednesday. No. Grow it, grow it right there. The fuck? Oh, don't, was yeah, everybody, don't was wrong, everybody I, fucking following you or what? I had this hair down to the small of my back from the age of 15 to 22. Mm. Um, and I did it because... Uh, anybody know Weird Al Yankovic? Weird Al, do you remember the fat video? Huge inspiration to the eight oh, fat I'm, kids that existed in the 80s, right? And uh, so I saw his hair and I'm like, dude, I have the same hair. It's curly. That, and I did not like getting haircuts because, as it turns out, I'm somewhere on the autism spectrum, like pretty much anybody who ever goes to these things. And uh, I didn't like getting my hair touched, my face touched, and like none of that shit. So I was like, I'll grow it out. And it, I, 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 I've had, I, it, was, it was beautiful. I'll be you honest missed, with you. You missed out because as a kid, if you get a really hot chick cutting your hair, when they get in front of you and they're like in the front part, yeah, yeah, their titties are in your fucking face. Ooh. So you missed out on that as a kid. All the more reason to get a haircut on Tuesday, Eric. You're just talking me into it. Don't go get a haircut. I, I okay, you can, but I personally think I would like to see where your hair would be if it was a little bit longer. You know, I'm on the Locale podcast with Keemstar and Jordy, and uh, Keemstar actually told me that I should keep my hair so at least one of us had some. I'm trying to grow out a hair enough for both of those dipshits. Yeah, you should. Two bald fucks and Flavio here. It's good. Flavio. I don't know. So how have you been? Seven. I have been all right. Uh, so let's talk about Texas Heat for a second. Fuck you. It's just getting started. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm never coming back. Actually, you know what? This is a record for May, I think, like this weekend, like all around. Yeah, it's like, it's only, is this, I, fuck, I'm like. Bro, it's only oh, like 90 okay. out. There's only 10 people in this room. I don't need a microphone. Okay. There's not um, 10. No, it's like, okay. Hey, this is more than you had last year. I have. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because you're and more, still. And more that's because you're too. still here. No, but you sold. When your, you leave, you sold at least yourself. half these people are going with you. Trust no. me. No. You sold yourself short that one episode when you were talking about how. When you told the guys, you're like, hey, just so you know, this is a smaller con. I usually get like 12 people. You sold yourself short. Yeah, because it's more like 14. Nah. No. I don't know. How many, uh, how many people are just here for Eric? Raise your hands. They're God damn you it. Guys. It would have been so funny if you raised your hands. And no. I have no ego left, so you can you know, be mean to me. I don't really care. Um, no, this is, uh, but also the benefit is this is where people get to sit down when they're tired. So that's why people come to the panels. You know what my secret is? Huh? I'm always sitting. <laughs> yeah, I, that's part of the reason why I have to, like, be cautious if I get a job. Like, I'm like, hey, it'd be cool to work here. And I'm like, no, fuck it. They stand too long. I got, like, a 15-minute time limit. Uh, you should try it my way. Never get a job. So I had a good stand-up. Con- I'm like, hold on real quick, because this is going into what I said earlier. Do it, do it. I was like, Boogie should be a fucking stand-up comedian. And the, but, but here's the irony in that. I can't stand up. Yeah, no, yes. Yeah, yeah. I make this joke. This is part no, of my no, no, no. You could be stand-up. like, you know, I know I'm a stand-up comedian, but forgive me. I can't exactly stand up. You have to squat on like a little bucket or whatever. Like, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Boogie. 
Yeah, it'd be good. Have you tried stand up comedy? Have you ever done? Got I've on thought stage? about it, but I'm too I've shy. I have a couple of friends who like. Do Fuck it. Let's see if there's stuff. an open mic tonight somewhere. Let's Fuck do it. everything about that, dude. No, no, no. To do it like where you can. No. Go you wouldn't want to do no, it? No, my self-esteem is about as low as it gets right Bro, now. This I'm on the Low Cal podcast. My self-esteem can't get any lower. The last thing I need to do is bomb at a comedy club tonight. No, you're, suppo- you're, you're supposed to bomb as a comedian because then once you're already down at the bottom, you can only go up. Brother, I can only go up <laughs> as it is. We're good. I don't need the experience. No, like You're supposed to bomb as a comedian so that way... It, it it's weird. It's like a reverse psychology on the brain. What's your funniest joke? What's your fun, funniest like bit on stage? I haven't done one on stage. Yeah. Uh, what what's up, ladies and gentlemen? YouTube booking the nine eight coming at your levels against the power of the internet. Uh, so if you guys might have noticed, I'm fat. But well, you didn't notice? Are you blind, sir? Yeah. I trust me. I'm fat. Um, anyway, it turns out it was the food, dude. I love food. There's nothing like food like thanksgiving dinner i don't know if i want to eat it or fuck it uh maybe both it depends on the thanksgiving really um, see you're, this is stand up right here but here's the thing about fat guys we love to eat ladies ladies talking to you the one in the back ladies we like to eat you know what i'm saying orally fixated uh you reminded me of like scary movie when he's like with the turkey and he's like, I don't know what this thing is, but I lick it anyway. <laughs> you lick it anyway. Yeah. Do you do you want to know? Is there any kids in the room? I don't want to offend any yes, children. Yes, there's kids. Okay. There's kids. All right. Don't want to offend any kids. But the point that I'm making is, ladies, you could do better than a fat guy. You could do worse than a fat guy too. Don't get me wrong, but you could do worse than a fat guy. You could do better. No, I mean fat guys are all right. Dude, I've had turds bigger than you. How would you know? Fat guys are all right. We are all right. In Texas, nine times out of ten, you, you were like the third fattest state in the United States. How? Can I talk about that for a second? How? How? How are you fat in Texas? Because a lot of the best food places are open late. You live in a sauna. Because fat people don't go outside. That's true. That's true. I parked... <clears throat> and here's the thing in places like new like like new york city los angeles you could walk to a substation you could walk to any kind of public transportation stuff is actually walkable distances in texas you had to fucking drive to get somewhere there's no fucking walking to go to the corner store that's true there's no walking to go to walmart yeah, and on top of that, our public transportation in all of Texas sucks. Why didn't we get a fucking subway system in any of our major cities? I'll tell you why. There's a lot of different reasons. No, no, I'll be honest. Houston and Dallas, is ju- you're just too big. Why did you spread everything out the way that you did? Have you ever seen a city? Most cities have stuff located near other shit. I have driven from one place to Dallas in one, and I've driven five miles in Dallas and still not gone to a second place. Why is it like that? Because people still own own land over here too. Hey, I own one tenth of an acre. Yeah, but then Walmart owns the rest of the fucking land in the city of where you're at. I do live in Northwest Arkansas. Everybody familiar with Northwest Arkansas? It's it's the home of Walmart. It is actually. One of the nicest places to live, but I will say that the people of Texas have way more guns, and I really appreciate that about you guys. TV timeout, though. I may live in Texas where there's more guns, but I don't know anybody that got out of their front door and shot a gun at somebody. Here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know anybody that done The that. reason I like it here is because I'm no longer allowed to own one, but at least I can look at them still here. They're very nice. I enjoy, enjoy seeing your guns. They're pretty good. Did you guys hear that I was shooting blanks that day? Also throughout life. But did you guys hear about that? Did you, did you yeah. hear about that, Eric? Yeah. What did you think about that? Uh, did you know at the beginning? Could you tell from the video? Tommy said he could tell from the video. Honestly, what I think you should have did is I think you should have just beat his ass. <laughs> Don't even use a gun. I think you should have just went outside and just fucking started wailing down and lay on top of him. and Lay on top of him? Dude, and just fucking... 
I would, Dude, I, you're four foot nine. He's like nine foot twelve. You, what would you do? Tickle his knee? That guy has never done shit athletic in his life. He is very large, though. He is a very, Don't mean very shit. large man. Don't mean shit. I, I literally I remember opening the door and I had to crane my head up. Bro, at least you played sports, right? So that's already an edge. Is is pocket pool a sport? You played football. Oh, that's true. What I was your position? Football. I was nose guard. And in fact, this oh, is a shit. True story. Defense. So I went to a small high school, very small. We had anybody know anything about football? Yeah, okay. we're in Texas. We had eleven <laughs> players. We had eleven players. Total. Total. How many people do you need on a field? Eleven. Yeah. You had so no what bench? happens if somebody got hurt? We're out for the season, right? So what we did, I was in JV. They were in varsity. Uh, they had the JV dress out with the varsity so it looked like we had a full team. And then we just left everybody on the field. And they're like, boy, they really like to work these first screen kids, you know. But they taught me, this is the only time I ever, this is the only like self-defense lesson I ever really got, is they taught me, all right, look, if they hurt one of our kids, we have to hurt one of theirs. So we're going to show you all how to get up under some pads with a helmet. <laughs> and they did. They're like, all right, your nose guard, you're on the line. If they hurt one of our guys, you hurt one of theirs. That's how it has to happen. And since you're on the line, it's very reasonable that someone gets hurt there. So you could probably get away with it. So we want the linemen to learn how to hurt other kids. And uh, I was like, wow, football sucks. <laughs> I don't like anything about this. And then I broke my arm dressing out for, with the varsity team and doing practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I realized, is this what they want me to do to people? I, I think I will go join band. Fucking, were you on Cobra Kai or what? Cobra Kai? Oh, my God, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, was your football team Cobra Kai or what? No, it Trying was just, to fuck people up? We were the St. Paul Deacons, and we were the bad guys, apparently. Oh, you went to a Catholic school? No, it was just, I don't know why, we were the St. Paul Deacons. And our rivals, right across the bridge, was uh, Castlewood Blue Devils. And I guess maybe that's what they were going for, the deacons, the devils, the deacons, the devils. I don't know. You don't have any idea how embarrassing it is. <laughs> My high school mascot, are, they're, they're like, ah, we're the blue devils. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I've got Bible-thumping deacon going, hash, peace to you all. Peace no, to you. Get under the pads, boogie. Break the rib. Oh. You should have been like, the power of Christ compels you to them. That'd oh, be that would have been so much better. Bro, and then when you when you get done, you could have been like, "This house is clear." Were you were you, were you popular in high school? Fuck yeah, I was, but I was I was like in the middle, like so I wasn't varsity, but I was like second second string. But depending on how fat I was that season, was what position I oh, was. Nice. So yeah. so my my freshman year, I was a I was a center. Sophomore year, I was a defensive end. And then junior year, I made my way to like being like a receiver. So it just depended how fat or skinny I was that season. Yeah, yeah. But I never, never was like a starter. But I was cool enough to where, since I wasn't a starter, I could hang out with the nerdy kids. But then, because I was also an RTC a little bit and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then I was also sports, so I could go. So I would just go from table to table, and I literally would just, I would get double trays. So at my lunch, I would get double trays. Yeah, for just like twenty five cents more, you can get a second tray at my. Why? Because I was hungry. You fat bastard. So I would go and I would. We, so we had a hamburger line, we had a pizza line, and like a chicken line. So it was either chicken nuggets or chicken tenders. This is how I know you're older. Chicken sandwiches. I, this is how I know I'm older than you because you had choices at lunch. Hold on, listen, listen. We just had the food, and then we had a salad line that had salad and baked potatoes, and then. We had a Little Caesars line and a Chick-fil-A line. Well, la di da and I went to school in on. the mall. Hey, and a Blue Bell ice cream line. I've never hated anyone more than I hate you right now. No, no. But and you we were loved just my talking lunch. about Frank. You would have loved my lunch. You would, if you would have my Yeah, school. that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> well, anyways, I would get double trays, and then I would literally just go sit at each each table so i'd be like oh i gotta say hi to my weird say hi to my weird my weird little emo friends i gotta go say hi oh i gotta say hi to the athletes i gotta go say here and then i gotta go over here so you know i was popular in high school in terms of everyone knew who i was 
because you couldn't miss me. Uh, they would all go boom, bob, boom, bob as I walked down the hall, you know. You know who else was popular in the high school? Who was popular? Chris Chan. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so you, know, you missed it. We're talking about Chris Chan and Nick. Oh, I have so much to say about Chris Chan. Hold on. So this Nick Ricada stuff. Yeah. All right. He owns the medallion. Do you guys know yes. about this? Everyone that has bought a Chris Chan medallion has That's had a, a mighty downfall. We a have curse. Nick Rakita just got busted for drugs. We have iDubs. Where do I even begin with that yeah. one, okay? I'm searching my house. When I get home, I might have one. Bro, that explains it all. There's one in my home. Check check outside in the yard. Somebody could have did bruja and buried it in the yard. That's what I'm thinking. My shaman probably is like... No, no. Legitimately, ow. dude. Legitimately. If you think... like, And I'm not trying to be funny. If you think that somebody put like a curse on you or something, check your yard. I'm being dead. Like My hairs are standing up. I'm being dead fucking serious. Who Grim is Re- it? Grim Reaper, is that you? <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good timing. Um, uh, so what I'm saying, though, is legitimately have somebody check your yard, see if anything's buried in it. I swear to God, you need to do it. Bitch, have you met me and seen my roommates? None of us are going into that yard. Well, f- just, just it's trust outside me. of the house, Eric. I bet you, I bet you you'll find like a statue like this tall. Baron. What? Of what? Of a Chris Th- Chan medallion? No. Well, anyways, back to the Chris Chan stuff. So you know Irate Gamer, right? Yeah, yeah. So he does the ghost, paranormal, like spiritual research stuff. A lot of people are making Chris Chan believe that – I'm not Chris Chan. Chris Boar's Irate Gamer. Yeah. They're telling him that Chris Chan cursed the medallion and to look into the thing and explain how items can be cursed. And he's taking it serious. Oh, my like God. Like, he's made two videos about how he's a ghost behavioralist, and he's talked about a ghost behavioralist. Yes, that's what he now, calls Mr. himself ghost, now. ghost, we have to work on our anger issues, so, don't so, we? So you need to watch it, because he's all like, yeah, people can curse items, and it'll stay with you, and entities will follow you. And I believe that Chris Chan, who are, he, doesn't, he says he doesn't know who Chris Chan is. So he's either a fucking genius, and he's trolling at maximum level, but he's like, so whoever sent him this medallion has probably give Nick Rakita a curse that is eating him alive. And if you look at his facial structure, you could tell that he's, you Boy, know. let me tell you something. I would like to get that curse for about 250 pounds, please. You'd take it away afterwards, but give me that specific curse. Just be cursed enough to where you shrink just enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever seen the movie Thinner? No. There's this movie called Thinner. It's based on a book by Stephen King. A guy pisses off a gypsy. Am I allowed to say that? I don't give a shit yes. anymore. Yes. Um, but he pisses off a gypsy, and she curses him with a cursed pie. And uh, he, pie. he gets cursed with a, a wasting disease that will make him waste away. And, and, but he's given the curse inside a pie, and he has to feed the pie to a loved one. And if he does that, the curse will go away. I've never I'm heard like, of that it. is the best. Fuck Jenny Craig. That is a good deal. Where's me a gypsy? I need to upset a gypsy today. I don't think you're a fine one. I will Texas. feed you that pie. I will force feed it with a hammer and an axe. You will eat that pie. What kind of fucking pie was it, though? I don't know. At the end of the movie, um, spoiler for a movie that came out in 1976. I apologize. Wait, this came out in 76? It's like that. It's something like that. Maybe 82. You know, I don't know. But um, he, the, he gets the pie, and he takes it home, and he leaves it on the counter, knowing that his family members will eat it, and he will be lifted of the curse. Maybe and, it's his ex-wife. Then, Maybe it's like he's going through a breakup with his wife. He's like, are you hungry for pie? And then plot twist, that was the prequel for American Pie. And then the dad just got, mm. on, the cou- the dad just got on the counter and started fucking mm, the pie. Warm apple pie. I, uh, look, Chris Chan, y'all, I mean, know, I, I, y'all know, I hope you haven't seen this. Uh, I made a documentary with a documentarian by the name of Di- Mike Klum, and we call it a documentary, but, you know, there's some bits in it, too, and stuff. Um, he is currently working on several documentaries, and there is hope, hope, he'll get a Chris that Chan. he'll have the Chris Chan one out eventually. Oh, he'll definitely will. It is, and I'm, when I say, I mean, like, if he does it, it's going to have, like, Chris Chan in it, Chris's family in it, 
I mean, it. in every time I'm like, please let that happen. I want to eat that up. That would be the best film I've ever seen. Well, if, if I may throw a suggestion and you can pass it along, the easiest way to get Chris Chan to do it is to make it a documentary about Sonichu. Oh, yeah. Because if not, if you think, if you tell him straight up, oh, it's just going to be a Chris Chan documentary. The merging will happen in no, no, But no, he'll, he'll feel like, oh, this is a setup. Because now he's becoming sentient. He's becoming aware. That's why we haven't seen shit about Chris Chan in a while, except when he shows up at Walmart. Because he has somebody, he has a handler right now telling him what to do, say, and behave. So what you do is you trick him. Hopefully this video doesn't show up anywhere and he sees it. Hi, Chris. You, you trick him and you make him think that you give a shit about Sonichu. And then he'll just automatically start going to like interdimensional stuff and all that. I wonder, sometimes I want Chris to be right. I would like it if Sonichu was Jesus Christ or is Chris see Jesus Christ? I don't know. I don't know the rules. But I would like to live in a world where like Sonic the Hedgehog is like running around doing cool shit. Wouldn't that yeah. be a much better world? So just so you guys don't know, because I know some of the people in here didn't know what Chris Chan was, he has this concept of that, that, the, that all the multiverses and stuff, there's going to be an interdimensional merge where all the stuff is going to come together and that Sonichu and uh, he's Jesus Christ and then there's Sonichu and everything's going to fucking come together and all this shit. Basically, what Boogie's saying is that he hopes it would be funny if Chris Chan was right about like the dimensional merge happening. Right, it would be cool to like get chased by Freddy Krueger and stuff, and like they're all right, son of the Hedgehog, and also you know, Freddy Chu. Freddy Chu, what is Fre oh, Freddy? Sonic Chu and <laughs> Sonic Chu and Freddy put together. That's his original content, Eric. That's his OC. Hers? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm done being politically correct, honestly. Oh, what's the worst welcome thing to the party, I can man. say today? What's the worst thing I can say today? Oh, Poop. God. Poop. No. Is that politically correct? No, that's nothing. Dude. I believe the politically correct term for poop is leftovers. Not really. It's feces. Wait. Is it? Yeah. <coughs> the point that I'm making is, hi, everybody. I'm YouTuber Boogie 298 You know who was supposed to be here today? Originally, for one brief moment, Keemstar agreed to be here. Who knows who Keemstar is? He's a YouTuber friend of mine. We have a show together called The Local Podcast. I see you're a fan, of course. And uh, please don't watch it. It's very degrading. But I, I have an idea, Eric. Uh, what if we called Keem? Do it. I bet you he don't answer. I bet you he will. By the way, we're talking to my panel. It's like, I think most of the majority of y'all's viewership is like hate watchers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all need to embrace it more, though. Well, so we have a podcast called The Low Cal Podcast, uh, and he's correct. 98% of the people that uh, watch that thing are hate watchers. So 98% of y'all are hate, of them are hate watchers, and I think about 70% of those hate watchers are wings. Hate oh yeah, no. Okay, so my co-host is one of the uh, Wings of Redemption Call of Duty player from back in the day, uh, Jordy Jordan. He is. I. I. You know, people like to hate me as a hobby. People like to hate Jordy as a career move. They were like, "I'm going to quit working so that I can focus more on being upset about this guy streaming video games." It is wild. No, I'm dead. Serious. There is a guy who's completely destroyed his own life so that he can harass Jordy. To the point, one of them is in jail for committing crimes, and the second is wanted by the police, and they, for so, whatever reason... So here's the it. real question. Why the fuck hasn't Keemstar or Wings written a comedy screenplay about an internet troll that goes to jail for trying to troll a YouTuber or an internet influencer that has comedy movie written all over it all right let's write it right now okay um, it could be like blood in blood out have y'all seen that movie have you not seen no, blood in blood out no it's on youtube for free or it's on hulu disney owns it now disney owns blood in blood out now okay all right so okay fade in we have a, a very famous youtuber doesn't have to be famous maybe just like hated. A, but like a mr beast type maybe i don't know right yeah and he's reading his comments on his yacht 
surrounded by money and beautiful women, and he reads a comment that says, kill yourself, you piece of crap, right? So he deletes the comment, and then we, we fade into the, the phone, we go through the pipelines of the internet, and we come out at a desktop computer where a fat, sweaty, shirtless, 8-bit Eric is typing, kill yourself on the screen. <laughs> or it could be me, I guess it could be me, you know? And, and we pull further out and it looks like Asmon Gold's bedroom with like all the sweating, rotting old feces cups and pee oh, cups, God. right? Don't get me, hold on real quick. I don't want to interrupt your story, but as much of a low cow as like you might be or Wings might be, and you know, I'm sure Asmon Gold's a really nice guy and all. I've never seen somebody have such a fucking disgusting fucking house and room it's in my fucking It's truly horrific, life. isn't Even it? Even Chris Chan is cleaner than him. Yeah, Airsoft Fatty was like, God damn. You Get know, a mop. I'm sure he's a good guy and I like his content, but dude, hire yeah. a fucking maid. You could like phone apps to hire maids. I think it's based, if I'm being honest with you. Like, he's like, hey, that's how I grew up. It's how it is. That's how I like it. I don't really care about that kind of thing. That's pretty based. That's the definition of based. He does not care. He's like, I have ten I million mean, dollars could in the be bank. Worse. I just don't care. It could be worse. Like he could just wear diapers and shit himself all day and shit. That's my dream job. No, um, I'm gonna call game. I want to put him on the phone with you. <laughs> he ain't gonna answer. Oh, I promise you. What's up, Buggy? What's up, Keemstar? Guess uh, I'm in a room full of one, two, three, four, five, six, fourteen people. No, there's like there's a good fifty 14. in here. There's low cow T-shirts in this audience right now, and I would like you to do me a favor. Yeah. Could you come here, please, sir? With the, wearing the low cow shirt, you, you come here, come here. I would like you to apologize to this man specifically for me. Could you do that for me? that I couldn't make it to this event. Um, but in reality, it's Boogie's fault. How is it my fault? How is it my fault, you piece of sh- oh. <laughs> You missed the pun, is he still on? No. You missed the punch line, I was like, Kim, you know what you did? You made me stand in for you. Oh, God. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna put this video on my YouTube channel when I get it, so yeah, yeah, Kim. Kim, look at what you've done to me, much less this audience. Yes. Absolutely. At the end of the day, he wants me to go to like a a Fourth of July party at his his house. Could you think of anything worse than going to Keem Stars? No, house? that'd be badass. You could so go on like the ATV. Such a bad time. I'm like, Bro. man, can my heart attack happen between now and July? <laughs> Is there a way that I can get out Just of this don't by do it. dying? Just don't do it here, please. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, like here, as in the stage. Yes. yes. You okay, can, all right. I will, I will wait till I'm at my booth. Uh, get I, signatures by uh, do 145. Do I have permission, though, to clickbait it if it happens? Okay, I have a very... Okay, here's something very important that I really want to go in everybody's mind uh, on, and the internet. I have a friend by the name of Michael, kid behind the camera, if you're familiar with him. His dad passed away, and I think he made his latest My Dad is Dead and I'm Sad video... 30 minutes ago, right? And um, a lot of people are upset about it. Like, how dare you clickbait your dad's death? How dare you clickbait your dad's death or whatever? If you don't clickbait my dad's death, or my death, I apologize. If you do not clickbait my death, I will be very upset with you, Eric. I will All haunt right. you. You will need that okay. ghost behavioralist so I to know, tell I me. I know you have dark humor, and I want to ask for permission, and this might be a very un-PC question, and might be... Really bad, but are you are you are you getting buried or cremated? Cremated. Oh, uh, I was gonna say, well, I was gonna say if you're getting buried, do I have permission to clickbait me with a thumbnail like I'm peeing on your grave? Like dude, I I peed on my friend's grave. Dude, I want you to cl- I want you to clickbait snorting my ashes. I oh, want you to no. do whatever. I, I want s- you to mix me up into a shamrock shake and drink it. Okay. No, that's I gross. will personally send you chunks of my bone so that you can smash them and snore them like coke. Oh, that's 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 gross. Because there's a comedian by the name of Sam Kennison, and he really helped me be- understand death a little bit better, right? And he said, he's like, look, when I die, 
do whatever you want to with me because I don't care anymore because I'm dead. I can't care because I have died. But here's the right? irony in everything, though, Boogie. You're probably going to outlive most of us because you want to die so much. You know, here's the thing. I don't really, nobody ever really wants to die, right? But you're cool with it. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think, I don't talk about this a lot publicly, but I found God again a few years ago. That's good, man. I'm happy for you. Yeah, and, and him and I talk from time to time, and I personally believe there's something after this. Oh, there has to be. Right? And based on the life that I have led, it's absolutely hell. <laughs> And no. if I'm gonna start burning. Let's get it going. I would rather. No, no, it no. Today. And I'm not. Tr- I'm not trying to get super like religious or anything. But the fact that you're acknowledge. Hold on. The fact that you're acknowledging that you're not good enough means that you are good enough. Oh. Like you oh. know what I mean. That's part of it. Is humbling yourself to be like, hey, I'm not worthy. Because if you thought you're worthy, then. You know what I mean? That's how that's how it works, in yeah. my opinion. I think it would be I think it would be cool. I think it would be like cool to get to party with you and like uh, everybody else in heaven. But you do know hell's got much better people in it, right? I mean, like, right? Like, yeah, you what, gotta Hitler? do it like Hitler. No, don't, don't please don't cancel yourself. But again, like Bogey. all of the Rolling Stones are down there. Every artist, every painter, every philosopher—they're all down there, dude. It's gonna be a cool place. You know who's in? You know who's in heaven? I'll be hanging out Mormons. with Mormons. No, I'll be hanging out with. I'll be hanging out with Mother Teresa and fucking Gandhi. You can go down there. No, you're gonna be up there. You're gonna be up there with like. You're not gonna get to meet the celebrities up there. You're not a celebrity. You're gonna be up there with Mormons, and they're gonna be like, "Would you like to speak with our, about our no. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ?" You're like, "Dude, he's right there. I don't need to talk about him. I can talk to him." And they're like, "No, no, no. Let's talk about him, dude. You're dead. Give it up. Come on, Michael." Come on, John. Hi. She's laughing her ass off. Hi. Are you hearing this talk or what? Everybody uh, in Texas loves Mormon jokes. Let's get political now. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah, we had uh, the saddest all-you-can-eat fish and shrimp last night. I'm so sad. It, no, I, no, you lucked out. I thank wish you, thank I, you I for f- No, no, thank you and Des for flaking on us cuz y'all would have been pissed off. I didn't flake on you. We didn't no, have no, plans, no, bitch. No, 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 I'm saying y'all would have been pissed cuz me and Billy, we were fucking livid. So, you see this sign. It says 15.99 all you can eat shrimp. We went to Razoo's or Razoo's or what was it? Razoo's? Razoo's. Fish, shrimp, coleslaw, mm. hush puppies, corn. Mm. And you think, okay, it's all you can eat. I'm going I'm to load the fuck up. Let's go. So the first plate, okay, that's cool. Had two pieces of fish, coleslaw, and like fries and a drink. And you're like, she goes, you guys want another round? I'm over here like, fuck yeah, dude, let's do it. She brings literally each of us one of the saddest fucking piece of fish, like smaller than this fucking phone and like a red basket and only the side. No more fries anymore. One piece of fish. You're thinking, fuck. Like, I'm like, can we get can we get like three? And she goes, Oh, I'm sorry, we do one at a time. And not only that, we had to wait like twenty minutes for each each one piece of fish. Well, did you know that red lobster is going out of yes. business? And do you know why they blame all you can eat shrimp, which is just a really covert way of blaming me. <laughs> but I am you- telling you, I put that place under the floor. Do what? Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, what? it's it's still the closing mine. I can promise you that. Do you want to see that place? A... I walked into a Red Lobster when I was six hundred pounds, and the manager started crying. Well, you want to any... like what? The waitress is like, "Well, lacing up my running shoes. Let's you, go." You want to know something funny? What? The other day when they announced it, I literally I don't get many like much engagement on Twitter. I posted that afternoon. Time for lunch, eating red lobster like a king, right? Mm. And I got a whole bunch of likes, whatever. And then literally later that day, they filed for bankruptcy. So I yeah. Put, so I got your more one likes. meal wasn't enough to save the company. It turned no, no, out, but huh? it's funny because literally the Oops. day that I was like, yeah, eating red lobster. I go to Captain D's and Long John Silver's all the time because it's like 
It's like a really shitty slow breakup, you know? It was like, I will really miss you one day, Red Lobster. I will really miss you one day, Long John. So they're like, I know, goodbye. Goodbye. They just refuse to actually quit, right? Have you been to a, a Long John's in, lately? Who yes. works at a Long John's, man? It is the coolest people I've ever met. I, was, I, I went to Long John's, and I got waited on by a person with no teeth, a squinty eye. She was clearly only 25. She looked 50. And my first thought was, well, this is Oklahoma, so it's meth, right? No, I realized, actual pirate. She was in, they are run by actual pirates. At least they look like it. So um, I will say, though, you had a, a disappointing dinner. It sucked. It was the worst. My date and I went to Rainforest Cafe last night. Place is awesome. That place is also closing uh, left and right. And I, I have a f- guess as to why. We did the dark ride at uh, in Galveston. If you've never done the dark ride, get there before it's gone. It's small. It's cheesy. It's also $12, man. You, come on, right? If you like dark rides, you know what I mean by dark rides? Pirates of the Caribbean, that kind of thing, right? Those things, great. They're fantastic. It's cute. You can tell it's about to close because <laughs> most of those animatronics are, well, they can't die. They're animatronics. But I, it's almost a five, night at Fre- five Nights at Freddy's there now at this point is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it is beautiful. Uh, they got great stuffed animals. Uh, she got a Build-A-Bear last night. She so seemed to enjoy that quite a bit. Uh, and then... We ordered dinner. Ask me how dinner was. How was dinner? My date threw up halfway through it. Sounds hot. It was. It was. Well, the vomit was hot. I, the rest of it I don't know so much about, but the vomit was definitely warm. Yeah, so I, I would rather go to Razoo's, Scoozies. What was the place called? You should clickbait it, though. You should clickbait it? You need to be on the thumb like with the point thing that everybody does now, and you need to have her on it puking. And then put like blurred and put the title, She Almost Died. She Almost Died. <laughs> almost Killed by Rainforest Cafe Appetizers. And then just have like one of the animatronics like for no reason. just like You're right doing there. well on YouTube again. Yeah, I'm in that right wing grift. Yeah, I know, that's what I was about to say. You really <laughs> just got into it, didn't you? Yeah, I oh. mean, I get happy when a video gets more than a thousand views at this point. I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah, yeah dude. I'm, I'm actually enjoying them. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. Uh, you do a really good impression of the quartering. I think you should oh. rebrand your channel as the quarter pounder. That asshole was following me, and then he unfollowed me within like two weeks. Because you do what he does better. <laughs> no, so he, he followed me the second I made my first Review Tech USA video because he hates Review Tech USA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He followed me and started liking some of my stuff, and then after I went on y'all's show, he unfollowed me. Yep, yep. There's this uh, there's this Because I don't think he likes Keem either, right? Dude, Keem doesn't like Keem. Nobody likes Keem. I don't like Keem, and the guy pays me checks every month. That's and what I'm it's like, about. Well, thanks for the check, but you're still an asshole, right? Like, what do you do? You know. Um, but at the end of the day, there is there is this sub community of people in the commentary community that are like hating on our show. And when they do that, I'm always like, Hey, Bo Blacks, where's your show? <laughs> right? Like, well, let's see your numbers on your non-existent show, right? But uh, it is, it is, I think Jeremy's one of them. I think Jeremy's like, oh, is Boogie feeling any amount of happiness these days? Well, I, I haven't I'm seen him say anything that. about you. I haven't seen him say anything about Boy, you. Google my name. No, him, him specifically. I haven't seen him say anything about you. I've no, seen honestly, him. recently, him and I had a conversation and he actually reached out to me. It was really nice. And, uh, you know, it's actually, it's actually interesting. I seem to have hit this like threshold. Like, you know, with the documentary, I have thought if I pushed through, if I kept pushing through, it'd be like getting to the other side. I called it my, anybody see Shawshank Redemption? Great film if you haven't seen yeah. it. Uh, but it was my mile long pipe of shit, right? And I thought if I get to the other end of it, things will get a little bit better. And at first they did, and then they got worse, and then they got better. But I, like people like the quartering and stuff. They saw that, and they were like, dude, that was entertaining as shit. You're a really entertaining guy. And they were nice to me again. It was kind of cool. Mm. Yeah. What's, you you want to know what that's like? What? People being nice to you? <laughs> I know. I, I, could, I could show you. Hey, I sold three books today already. 
Dude, I have a copy of Eric's book. You guys should pick that up. I yeah. read the uh, I read the uh, back of it, and it seemed like a really <laughs> interesting yeah. book. I I you read know, most of the title. You know, you know, I did the audible version. Like I read it. Did you really? Did you use like the book voice? You're like, yeah, I'm talking like professional. Yeah, from high school. Yeah, to I'm talking headlocks. talking very professional on it. By Eric. Eight it's bit. so hard to like. Written it's so hard to Eric. read like a book. It's eight a, bit. I think the runtime is like two hours twenty Eric. minutes. Eight bit. Yeah. Chapter one. Pretty much. Once I was in high school. It was a little faster. than Now that. I'm in headlocks. The it's a end. little faster than that. <laughs> that but it's like it's like a two hour and twenty minute runtime. Wow, actually, that's pretty good. I will get the yeah. Audible version because I do. I, I am not promo, reading. I give you a free promo code. No, but do do what? I will pay the four dollars. If you have the subscription to Audible, you get it free. I do actually. I do. If you have, I have Kindle I have Unlimited. If you left. guys have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. By the way, I I was going to write a book. You should. I'll help you do it. And then I realized he has a lot of typing. No, no, I'll, I'll help you do it. What if I just? How about this? How about you and I go to Vegas? We get a hotel room. You know we're Do not going to stay. Do a tremendous amount, amount of, coke. of cocaine, pork chops, <laughs> and crank it out in a weekend. Why do we have to go to Vegas to do that? Oh yeah, what's that movie? The, the oh, you know, the movie with the real the quick. Guys? I might be wrestling in Arkansas soon. Real? What part? Uh, seven hours away from San Antonio, so somewhere probably on the border. Oh, you're gonna die there. We Arkansas boys, we don't quit. I mean, I'm pretty excited for it. It'd be August third. August third. If I go, if well, we you know, I mean, the Grim Reaper was here earlier. I might be dead by yeah, then. Yeah, who the fuck? Rent, who the fuck was that? Was that any of y'all that banged that door? That was fucking wild. Well, no. So I did see coming to this uh, uh, because of the nature of like maybe Dan was going to be here, Keemstar and stuff like that. I saw a lot of people like, I'm coming to troll you. Oh yeah, I thought y'all were going to get like right. death threats and right. shit. And what that probably meant was some 14 year old was going to knock on the door once. Yeah. Uh. You know. Well, I went to too many games that year that fucking review tech got like a death threat. They said they were going to sniper him from like the window. And I was like, there's literally no window in the there's fucking no yeah, in yeah. the panel room. How the Dude, f- can we find me a window? And they were right? all they were they were all scared. Like the whole convention was terrified. Oh, he's going to get sniped. I'm like, god, y'all are fucking idiots. Find me a window. I'll be I'll be like find a window flash it. Come on right here. Here, here. I was like, you guys are Shave idiots. Shave my head to look like rich. Let's go. Yeah, I was like, you guys are fucking idiots. First of all, nobody's going to fucking waste a bullet on Rich. See, that work, that joke works on two levels. Because number one, I like to pretend that I want to die. Uh, but it also works on the level of y- people who say shit like that are pussies. Yeah, I Nobody know. actually means it. So I've been getting into a fight with some like SJW dude that's like a muscle head guy has a podcast. Is on- it Vosh? Is it Vosh? No, no, no. This guy's muscle. Mention the horses. Uh, so this dude, he's like... If anybody steps up to me at a convention, I'm putting them in an arm bar. And he's like, he's like a podcast guy. And I've just, I've been like, you ain't gonna do shit. So I fucking posted that I was here, and I was like, anybody comes to me, I'm gonna put you in an arm bar. And I tagged him. Yeah. To start yeah. shit. I had, I had, um, I had a guy show up to Southeast <laughs> Game Exchange once, and he was in the panel audience, and I asked for Q and A's, oh, yeah, yeah. and he was like. Are you a fan of John Lennon's work? And I'm like, yeah, man, I guess the Beatles are okay. Uh, is that your question? He goes, well, I don't mean his music. I mean the way he beat the hell out of Yoko Ono the way you beat your ex-wife. And I was like, well, that didn't happen. And uh, if you'd like, you can come to my booth and we'll call her and she'll tell you it didn't happen. And then he didn't come to my booth. Because, <laughs> like, these guys have no spine. It's so bizarre. You will never have to put one of these guys in headlocks because you know why? Life has already. Their life is eternally in a headlock. They got put in a headlock in high school by some bully. They got swirlied and they'll be swirlied on their deathbed by Jesus Christ. That's I will say this, be. though. I have had two people actually come through and confront me, but we talked it out, and they bought me beer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. had two people. So, you, bitch. You went, the, you went the boogie method. You went the Mr. Rogers method. You were like, 
Well, what if I bought you a beer? No, 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 no. Jay's witness, because this was at Game On Expo. This guy came up. What's up? We're going to sell this? I said, I, I started to walk around. I was like, yeah, pussy. What the fuck's up? He backed away, and then Jay had to get between us. Shady Jay had to get between us. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, let's go, motherfucker, where no security's at. No, let's just talk it over. I was like, cool. Get me a beer. Get me a beer. Smart. Yeah, that's smart. And then we're cool now. We're actually friends now. You know, here's, I, that's, because that's actually one of uh, something I wanted to say on this panel. Um, Who's the next guys, by the way? But, yeah, it's me again. A second time. No, it's um. Oh, cosplay already. Damn. Yeah. When I was younger, uh, and the internet was kind of newish, we got on it to love things together. And the internet was a wild place back then. It was uh, message boards where we would love things like video games and role playing games together, and IRC chats where some very strange people loved children apparently. And had to go to jail. Um, but then later, it became a more widespread and fun thing. Uh, where everybody, not just internet nerds like me, loved things on the internet. And we did. And it was great. We talked about video games that we loved and movies that we loved, shows that we loved, and people that we loved. And then YouTube became a thing. And... We all shared videos of the things we loved and created videos about things we loved. But then 2016 happened. And I don't think it had anything to do with the election. It just, this is when it happened. But in 2016, people learned you can make a hell of a lot more, a hell of a lot more money than hating, by hating things, which is what my Francis character was about, right? You know, there's people back then that made like angry videos, but we were kind of making fun of them, right? And we always knew the angry video game nerd. Everybody here still loves uh, angry video game nerd, right? Yeah. Um, of course, when you do it in like a comedic style, you know, you make good money. But when you mean it, when you absolutely hate the thing, when you genuinely hate Marvel films, you'll make a fortune. And now we've raised an entire culture on hate. An entire generation, uh, eight, ten years of just the algorithm pushing hatred. And I used to hate that. I used to hate being hated. I used to hate oh, shit. Sorry. other on. people hating the things I loved. And now I get paid to do it. <laughs> I get paid to get hated. And uh, it's so much more fun. So I, I think hating something is a form of loving it. Does that make any sense? No. You love to hate it. No, it does because right? if it's a, it's yeah. no, you no, no, would no, hate no. to love it. Because if you if you feel something towards something, whether it's positive or negative, that means you care about it. So it's good to at least hate something or get upset. Let's talk about video games that we hate. Does anybody here hate Superman 64? Yeah. Do we hate Ninja Gaiden? Oh, do we? God, that game was hard, man. Do we hate Solomon's Key? That is the worst game I've ever played. You know, on level 32, you have to die and go back to level 28 to get to level 39. Make hey, that make sense. I'm going to say this real quick. If you get a heart attack by yelling, I'm fucking walking out of this room. Now, Solomon's Key 2. Now, that's a game. <laughs> I think. I think Solomon's Key sucks. Yeah. Any of, those iso any of those isometric games on the NES are garbage. But I, it's not isometric. And I got a fucking... You've not even played Solomon's Key. You are not qualified to judge it. Oh, wait. No, I'm, I'm thinking of Immortal. Yeah, Solomon's Key is a puzzler where it's yeah. like it's got some jump physics to it. And yeah. you break blocks with a wand and then you can create blocks yeah, yeah. with a wand. And it's just an unfair game. I'm, but, thinking, I'm thinking Immortal. What's your favorite game to love to hate? I don't know. I don't really love to hate video games. Like, if there's games I'm like, fuck that, I don't want to play that. Um, Therapy worked, everybody. Congratulations, Eric. Therapy worked. <laughs> Hold on. If there's like a game that I don't want to play and it's because people have been bugging the fuck out of me to always check it out, but I think the audience and fan base of it are stu super fucking cringe and weeb, anything persona because i'm like god oh my god they're so good it's no but it's such <laughs> like a nerdy so good it's, and it's not even like an autist like cringe weeby fan it's always like snot-nosed 
smelly, stinky people. Me, yeah, me. I told you, yeah, me. I love the search. I just said I'm just like, uh, and then the Helldivers fan base has been getting on my nerves too. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty wild. I can't live stream without anybody telling me you should be playing this instead. Play Helldivers two instead, and I'm like, fuck off. I'm playing GTA five for the thousandth time. Dude, I started playing Persona five out of just pure unhappiness and boredom i was going through like a bad breakup and just not having a very good time with shit and i so i downloaded persona 5 and i crawled into it and like an hour into it i'm like i'm not taking that girl on a date to a bathhouse this is stupid and then like a hundred hours into it i'm like dude i can't wait to take that girl to a on a date to a bathhouse this is such a good game i don't know what it is until you play it do you get until to fuck girls in the it. game I mean, oh, it's not like Baldur's Gate or anything. See, you know, that's why you GTA know, Five is better. Baldur's Gate, man. Did you play Baldur's Gate? Yeah, it's for like people that are super horny. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. I don't know. I played it. I I just kept dying. I was like, "Fuck this game." I liked talking to all the cats. Yeah. There's so many cats chill. in that game. I don't want a cat in real life unless it's between two buns for dinner. Um, yeah. I don't like cats, man. Cats suck. Any cat owners in here? Cats are trash. Leave. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, cats are bad dogs is basically what they are. Don't they, even hurt dogs like that. Yeah. I have two small dogs. They have every benefit a cat does except they don't hate me like a cat does. We don't deserve dogs. Nobody deserves dogs. That's why I have two of them. I'm going to buy a third this week when I get home. Your dog needs a dog, and that dog needs its own dog. Yeah. Well, I got my two dogs a fish, so that was neat. Yeah, I saw your fish tank. Oh, yeah, people are really judgmental about that. I know, I know dude. That's the Lord's problem so now. So what you need to do is you need to clickbait that. You need to get a separate fish tank and make it look like brown turd water and put, like, obviously a fake fish in it. Oh, like, that's so good. But you need to be like, oh, yeah. f- disaster struck, and just have your fish tank with red yeah. arrows pointing to it. Well, we got a fish. Any any aquarium keepers in here at all? Okay. So I didn't know a lot about aquariums getting into the hobby. Pain in the ass. And uh, first off, wow, it's pricier than I thought. And uh, I went to the fair, and I gave them $5, and I threw a ping pong ball into a bowl, and then they gave me a living thing in a bag and said, good luck. <laughs> so we took it home, and I got a 10-gallon uh, tank for a goldfish, which apparently is not enough room for a goldfish. Uh, it's, but I had to buy a filter with it, and I had to buy decorations with it, and I had to buy rocks with it. So that was all like 150 bucks. And then like two weeks later, the goldfish was too big for that, so I got him a 20-gallon tank. And now, two weeks later, he's too big for that. So I'm just going to buy a fucking lake? I don't know, man. I, I'm just going to... I don't know how to take... Well, anyway... I already got the fucking bait for you, dude. What? The, 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 the premise of the video is that your fish is getting too big. And then, just to trick people... Show your pant, your stove, and you're cooking a fish. Oh, that's so and, good. And no, but you're not eating that fish. You're eating fish. Different fish, yeah, but yeah. But you make them think. And oh, I color I, it gold in the problem. thumbnail or whatever, you know? It's a problem. I ate my fish. I ate my fish. Well, so here's the story, though. Um, we were having some algae issues, right? And we were cleaning the tank, but the Internet said, go get a couple of algae eaters. They'll take good care of the tank. And they were great. They moved in. But when you have algae eaters, when they run out of algae, what do you got to feed them? Got to feed them algae, right? Otherwise, they'll starve to death, sucking on the glass. So we got them algae pellets. Well, our goldfish loves algae pellets. I mean, to the point that we had to start hiding them in the fish tank so that the goldfish wouldn't eat them and then the little babies could. And where we hid them was inside one of the caves we got for the 10-gallon tank back in the day. It's in the back in the corner. It'll be fine. Well, Buddy forgot that he doesn't fit in there anymore. So he, snooting and rooting through there, tries to get the algae pellet. Came out missing an eye. (laughs) His right eye was flipped like this so that he was literally looking at God. Yeah. And we panicked. 
we immediately went to the pet store. We got to the pet store. I'm like, what do we do? They're like, give the fish antibiotics. We buy thirty dollars worth of antibiotics. Go add it to the tank. And at some point, he's like, dude, I'm missing an eye. What is this crane going to do? I'm like, man, look, I don't know how to give you back an eye. Um, so he lost his eye. Yeah. And uh, we have a one-eyed goldfish from the fair. And my thought process was, have I taken very good care of that goldfish? No, I've tried. But he could have had a better life. But, you know, had some little snot-nosed eight-year-old Fortnite addict thrown that ping-pong ball into that bowl, that fish would have died two days later. Because mm -hmm. they ain't none of them buying them a 10-gallon tank, then a 20-gallon tank, then a 30-gallon tank, then antibiotics. Did, it eat it, did the fish eat its own eye? I wanted it to. And it certainly would have. Desi took, the, took it and threw it in the trash. Oh. But I thought, thanks. at least feed it to the dog, right? Like, let somebody eat it. Everything that y'all need to do, you need to figure out how can I make a clickbait thumb for this. Yeah, I think about that a lot. I think about that a lot. But then again, um, I don't I See, that's the thing. At least for Twitter. You have to clickbait. No, right? no, don't, bit, even right? make, don't even make a video. Just make, just make the image and post it on Twitter. My clickbait is just me in the thumbnail. That's enough to make people like hate click on it. Okay, but dude. How golden would it be if you made it? people think you ate your goldfish? Oh, I'm going to do that. Yeah, as soon as I get home. Yeah, that's, uh, that was perfect. That's actually really good. <laughs> and then you get blocked by uh, Alyssa Mer Merck again. Yeah. What, I, it, so No, she unblocks and blocks like three times a week. Three times a week. There is, uh, does anybody follow any video game websites? There's Kotaku. One, there used to be one called Kotaku. I pretty much defunct now. Um, but you've been in a heated battle with uh, the chief and editor of that. What's that been like for you? It's been good. What's it like to know that there's, like, this woman in San Francisco that, like, goes and gets her, like, chai latte and then, like, sets down at her, like, overpriced desk and, like, you know, it's, it's uploads it and goes, I found out. I found out. To the community. I I found out she doesn't hate me as much as she hates other people, so I feel left out a little bit. Like I'm upset. That's like sad, I'm yeah. I'm genuinely upset that she doesn't respond to my messages or uh, subliminally, passively aggressive tweets about me. Do you know what's worse than that? Huh. I never even got on her radar. She just blocked me one day. I made a tweet. I'm, I'm curious about y'all's opinion on this tweet. By the way, it's medication time. I need to take my heart pills. I would like to not die, so forgive me. Yeah, please um, do it elsewhere if you do. But um, I made a tweet, and it got 5.7 million views. And do you know what the tweet was? The very controversial statement. Video games are supposed to be fun. Not lectures about being why, why, why being a white man is bad. Now, okay. I think anyone with a brain can agree there has never been a video game that was exclusively a lecture about being, why being a white man is bad, right? It wouldn't be much of a video game. If it did come out, you wouldn't have heard of it, right? Um, but does anybody here believe that video games are supposed to be fun? Am I the only one that wants to have fun while playing a video game? Right? Like, here's the best part about video games. And this is the direction your channel has gone in, talking about politics and stuff like that. I love it. It's very Well, enjoyable. I keep it gaming-focused, though. Yeah, so. but I, I like... I like turning on a game and tuning entirely out of this universe. Because this world has some really great stuff in it. It's got puppies and all-you-can-eat fish and these wonderful people. You're all quite wonderful. Uh, you not so much. No, it's good. Um, but What's it, up, man? <laughs> I'm on Boogie's panel. It's Billy. Billy's calling me. Hang on, you admit you, it's, you interrupted Boogie's Ending. Hang on. What's up? 
Okay. Go on. You can go on. Oh, yeah. hi, Mom. Still dead, I see. Oh, uh, what? Hang on, I'll, I'll 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 be there in a minute. Just Whatever this is, I'll be there like in two minutes. It sounds good. I'll be there in two minutes. Woo! Two minutes. Jesus right. Christ. Go on. I'm sorry. Somebody's buying something. Okay. I gotta go. Yeah, you go, man. Thank you so see much. Yep. I'll see you guys later. See you, man. Thank you. Thank you for making my panel even more awesome. I love you. But anyway, the point that I'm making is, um, life has some pretty amazing stuff about it. Uh, but there's some pretty shitty things about life too, and. Uh, I know some of y'all are going through it. Some of the people in this room are going through it today, whatever it is you're dealing with. And uh, just know I love you. Um, life can be hard. But that's the point of video games, right? It's one of the things we're all here to enjoy. There's this great moment at every retro gaming convention that some of you might have experienced at some point where you go out onto the floor and you find that Gremlins doll or that transformer or robotech figure or that piece of art that you're going to hang on your wall or that stuffed animal that you're going to take home and add to your collection and i don't know man it's magic right video games are magic we all have all these incredible memories tied to them and i miss that right i think that's why we're all here today modern video games they can be great i've been playing fallout 76 and stuff but nothing ever catches that magic like Pac-Man in the arcades or Super Mario at home. And uh, I hope you guys, whatever game you're looking for, whatever memory you're trying to chase today, I hope you find it. Hope you guys have a great panel. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go take a quick break. I'll go over to my booth and uh, we can chat there. All right. Thank you, guys.